Welcome back to the channel everyone. I appreciate all of you who have subscribed and tune in. Without you, this does not happen. Today I'm going to be talking about brakes. Now I don't know about you, but I'm a bigger guy at 215 pounds and like my brakes to be touchy, grabby and strong. Now I'm not a big fan of having really weak modulation on my brakes. I don't like my levers to feel really mushy. Some might be wondering just what exactly is brake modulation? Well, I've heard of it before, but I don't know what that means. Well, very simply, modulation is just your ability from the brake lever to control the amount of power that goes from those brake pads to your uh, rotor. So from that lever, how much power you're able to actually control the brakes from where you're at. When you don't have very much modulation, that lever is going to go all the way, practically touch the bar, limiting your ability to stop. Or very little modulation means you just barely touch that brake lever and the brakes engage. And good modulation for some folks is right somewhere in the middle when you grab onto that lever and somewhere in the middle, it starts to put down the power. Now, Shimano XTR and XT four piston brakes are great brakes. And I'm running currently the Shimano XTR brakes. But the question is, can I improve the performance? Can I improve on the power and the grabbiness of those brakes? So here's what I'm testing. I'm going to test out the Galfer rotors front at 203 millimeters and rear at 180 millimeters. But these rotors are not the standard 1.8 millimeters thickness. These are 2.0 millimeter thickness. I'm going to compare these to the Shimano IceTech floating rotors that come in a 1.8 millimeter uh, thickness. Now, there's going to be more though. We're going to compare the Shimano metallic four piston pads with the MTX gold four piston pads as well. Now the brakes that I'm going to be testing this on is on the Shimano XTR M9120 four piston brakes. Now here's the front rotor for the Galfer. It's 203 millimeters. Here's what it weighs. Not bad. Now if I'm going to compare these to the Shimano uh, disc brake rotors, which is exactly what I have currently on the bike. Okay, so we are getting 167 grams. So one of the differences you can see, again, as I said, this is a two-piece rotor. One, two, two pieces, here's the rivets, okay? Now, I didn't choose to go with the Gelfer that has a floating rotor, and they make colored rivets. Um, you could choose those rivets for a blue bike if your bike is red. As a matter of fact, I think there's a picture on here of them. Yeah, I didn't particularly care for the way it looked. It looks like you get them in orange, yellow, blue, red, and green. Um, so I chose the one that does not have a floating rotor. It does not have colored rivets. Now, as you can see, these rotors look quite predominantly for the most part same size, and they should be. They're both. 203 millimeters and their circumference but here's where we're gonna see the difference here here's a 1.8 millimeter rotor in the Shimano and we're gonna put that next to the Galfer which is a 2.8 millimeter rotor can you tell the difference the Galfer looks much thicker than the Shimano does and the Galfer for weighing 165.5 and the Shimano was 167. The Shimano actually weighs more than the Galfer does. Interesting, it's not bad. on this particular rotor picture is right here is the db w3 w w2 which is exactly what these are db 003 
W2. And it's got two, it shows 120 slash 140. So I'm assuming the 120 grams is for the 1.8 millimeters and the 140 grams is supposed to be for the 2.0 millimeter rotor. And this is coming out 135 grams versus 140 as stated. So let's see what the website actually shows this particular uh, rotor should actually weigh. Now here is the Shimano XT Ice Tech 180 millimeter rear rotor weighing in at 129 grams. It's four and a half grams lighter than the Gelfer in 180 millimeters. I know some people might care about this, so we'll discuss it real quick. Weight wise, Shimano 203 millimeters is uh, 167 grams. The Gelfer 203 millimeters is actually 165.5 grams, so it's a little bit lighter. The Shimano uh, 180 millimeter rotor is 129 grams, so it's coming out, as I just said, four and a half grams lighter. Okay, so here's what we have here. Measured up to 15 feet, I've got a starting line of where I will start applying the brake, and then I have a starting line of where I will uh, begin really hammering on the pedals. That's about 45 feet further up. We'll have that marked, and then we'll start testing the Shimano rotors with the Shimano uh, metallic brake pads. Here's our starting point. Pedaling. Slamming on the brakes. And it looks like the hub is right at 13. Pedaling. And... Oh. This time, front hub looks like it's about 12 and a half and we're hammering once again 12 and a half front hub okay here goes run number four whoa this is right at nine and a half punching it punching it Oh, endo, front hub is right at nine. All right, so after about five runs, we've bedded these pads in. I'm gonna give it a shot. All right, pedaling, pedaling, pedaling. Okay, oh, 10 and a half. Okay. Nine and a half. Just as good as the Shimano's. All right. Stop. Oh. Woo. Can you see that there? Stopped me at seven and a half. I went forward about a couple inches. I would give that Let's see here. With the inches I rolled forward because I was endoing, I would give that a seven. Grab, pedal, 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 stop. That's pretty much close to six and a half. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna take off the XTR rotors and we are going to install the Galfer rotors, which are 2.0 millimeters. So the Galfers are now on, and we are running back to the Shimano metallic pads. So there's the Galfer rotors on, and I've uh, run them a few times already with the metallic pads, just so they bed in. They get to uh, simmer together. Much better. That is eight and a half, right on the nose. 
All right, let's go. Oh, seven and a half. All right. Oh. There is a six, six and three quarters. That one is seven and a half. And we are right at seven on that one. All right, let's go. Right around 10. Here we go. Ooh. Here we go. That looked like six. Six and a half, seven. That probably would have stopped at six, but I let off. Something I want you to take notice of, and you may have already seen this, but with these Galfer rotors, the numbers kept dropping the more runs that I did. This basically means that the more frequently you're going to be using them and the warmer they get, the better they're gonna perform. Here's what it finally looked like in the end. The Shimano rotor with the Shimano metallic pads, we averaged 11.2 feet in stopping. Now the Shimano rotor plus the MTX gold pads averaged 8.1 feet in stopping. Now as we swapped out the rotors, we put the Gelfer rotor on, which is the 2.0 rotor. With the Shimano metallic pads, that averaged 7.45 feet. Then the Gelfer rotor plus the MTX gold pads averaged slightly a little bit better, 7.3 feet. Now on the trail, I've spent more time on the Gelfer rotors switching between the Shimano metallic pads and the MTX Gold ceramic copper pads. But here's what I've noticed. The noise is more apparent on the Shimano metallic pads when they are applied. Now, it's not usual, but it became apparent when you put back the MTX pads on, which are virtually silent, when you apply the brake at any force. I did not wet the MTX pads, so I can't really tell you how silent they are when they get wet. But MTX does claim that their pads are more silent, and I would say they pretty much are. Also, I've noticed that the Shimano metallic pads offer an immediate bite with practically no modulation. The MTX pads do not bite as hard as the Shimano when they're applied, but they will modulate the power immediately from one finger just as strong as the Shimano pads bite. Now, to the Galfer rotors they have an immediate noticeable difference from the Shimano 6-bolt Icetech rotors. And I'm talking about the 2mm Gelf rotors that I have on here. They offer way more power and an immediate engagement of power at the lever from one finger. Now this can be adjusted on the Shimano brakes or on the code brakes. But for me, I was on the search to increase my brake power. When my brake engages and how twitchy it is, when it is engaged. Some don't like that, and I fall into the minority that likes that type of thing. When I touch it, I want it to, I want to know it's there. Now the Galfer 2mm rotors are a really big performance improvement if you are after more power. Now, the more inexpensive way I found was this. As you saw on the street tests, the MTX pads with the Shimano rotors were an improvement in performance. I would suggest you try out the MTX pads alone. I think you'll be happy about the upgrade in power. The MTX Gold Pad offers more copper in the pad, so it's the ultimate in stopping power for heavier riders, for e-bikes, or if you do lots of downhill descents and you're wanting more power. Here's what I've settled on in this whole thing, and it's a blended system. What I'm doing is I'm running the Shimano Metallic Pad up front with the 203 Galfer rotor for more bite 
And then in the rear brake, I'm running the MTX Gold Pad for more modulation. I've noticed the Shimano metallic pad in the back with the Galfer rotor, it's so powerful that it just locks up the rear wheel. So the MTX pad allows me to modulate that power without skidding in the dirt. Of course, your tires would be the next step in improving your braking power. If you've made it this long, I hope you find this information helpful to you. Please consider subscribing and hey, hit that like button, like this video and share this video if you think somebody else could really benefit from it. I want to leave you with this. On the trail of life, it doesn't get any easier. You just get better. So push forward as you travel the narrow trail.